Last week, we learned Jesus is the best gift. His birth that we celebrate at Christmas points us to his death and resurrection. When a person believes in Jesus as Lord and Savior, he makes them new and sends the Holy Spirit to live inside them. You made origami hearts after the lesson. There are a lot of things that you can make with origami, like this butterfly I made. I started with a piece of paper and after folding it all sorts of different ways, I made a butterfly. But since the work of folding already had started, even if I unfold this butterfly, it will never again be a flat and uncreased piece of paper. And that's the type of work that Jesus does in the lives of those who believe in him. Once you give your life to him, he makes you a new creation. And the work he does in your life can't be undone. You are his and you will start to look different. His mark will be on your life. And that's what we're going to talk about for the next few weeks, what a changed life in Jesus Christ looks like. In John 15, Jesus tells us that he is the true vine. Verses seven through 12 say, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Jesus is telling us that the only way we can live his way is by abiding in him, drawing our strength from him and not doing things apart from him. Let's play a quick game before we get started. I have a few challenges in mind before we start our story. How many can you finish before our story starts in one minute? One of them is turn your shirt around backwards, put a hat on, wear a blanket or towel like a cape. Three things you can try to do before we start our story. You have one minute. How many can you get done? story, Mary and Martha. So part of God's story is about Mary and Martha, and it goes like this. Mary and Martha were sisters. We don't know a whole lot about them, but we do know they lived in Martha's house in a town called Bethany. Mary and Martha were really good friends with Jesus. So when they invited friends over to hang out, sometimes Jesus came over. Kids, what would you do if Jesus was coming to your house? Well, one time, Jesus came over for dinner at Mary and Martha's. When he arrived, the sisters got everything ready. Or rather, Martha got everything ready. Mary wasn't helping at all. She just sat at the feet of Jesus, listening to him talk. When Martha saw Mary sitting there, she was furious. She wanted everything to be perfect for Jesus, and she thought that Mary should help. Eventually, Martha got so mad that she stomped over to where Mary was sitting. She didn't even talk to Mary. Instead, she said, Jesus, my sister has left me to do the work by myself. Don't you care? Tell her to help me. When Jesus heard Martha, he wasn't mad. He just wanted to be with her. He said, Martha, Martha, you were worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Kids, that one thing is Jesus. See, Jesus didn't mind that Martha was making dinner. That's a nice thing to do. The problem was, Martha didn't realize how special it was to be spending time with Jesus. She was too focused on making dinner. Imagine planning a big party for all your friends, but you got so caught up in getting ready, you didn't even get to have fun with them, which was the whole reason you had them over. That's kind of like what happened to Martha. Anyway, as for Mary, 
She wasn't being lazy. She just cared about Jesus more than anything else. Maybe more than she cared about what Martha thought of her, and maybe definitely more than making a perfect dinner for her friends. Of course, Jesus likes it when we help our sisters, or our friends, or our moms, or our dads, or our brothers, or our cousins, or anyone else who needs it. But he told us that the most important thing we can do is love him and God with all our hearts. And the second most important thing we can do is love others. You can read about it in Matthew 22, 36, in the Bible. Martha wasn't loving God or Mary, so Jesus encouraged her to act like her sister. Mary had a chance to sit at Jesus' feet, and she did. And that's the story of Mary and Martha. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Mary and Martha were sisters. They lived together. They were friends with Jesus. They invited Jesus over. Martha worked on dinner. Mary sat with Jesus. Martha got mad. Martha told Jesus she was mad. Jesus said Martha only needs one thing, him. Loving Jesus is the most important thing we can do. And that's a part of God's story. How many of you finished all three challenges before our story started? You probably looked a little different while listening to the story of Martha than you did when we started our lesson. Your shirt might be on backwards, or you're snuggled up in a blanket, or maybe you're breathing a little heavier because you just ran around the house to find a hat. Well, those are changes that happen to our appearance and body, but the change that happens when we believe it in Jesus is different than that. He makes us a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Martha was doing good things, making food for Jesus, preparing dinner for the guests, but her sister Mary chose the better thing. What was that? Sitting at Jesus' feet. Did Mary know she was choosing the better thing? The Bible doesn't say, but we can be sure that we are choosing the right things to do with our life when we look to Jesus and ask him first before making those choices. What choices do you have to make this week? Have you asked for Jesus's wisdom about them? James 1.5, James writes, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. What things happened to you today that you rushed to tell someone else about? Did you pause and, and tell Jesus about them first? Like Martha, we can fill up our day doing good things, helping a neighbor, listening to a sibling. But if we don't spend time with Jesus, we won't have the spiritual fruit like love and joy and peace to share with others. So today, just spend time with Jesus. Just love him, read his word, pray to him, journal about what's going on, tell him about the things that happened today, what you're hopeful for tomorrow. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye.
That's what we'll do. 